Will you please stand? Dying Christ destroyed our death, and rising Christ restored our life. Christ will come again in glory, and as in baptism, Ruth, Naomi, check put on Christ, so in Christ may Ruth be clothed with glory. Here and now, dear friends, we are God's children. What we shall be has not yet been revealed, but we know that when we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. And those who have this hope purify themselves as Christ is pure. Jesus said, I am the resurrection and I am life. Those who believe in me, even though they die, yet shall they live. And whoever lives and believes in me shall never die. I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end, the first and the last. I died, and behold, I am alive forevermore, and I hold the keys of hell and death. And because I, Jesus, live, you shall live also. Please be seated. Family, church family, friends, and whoever had your phone on, you better turn it off or Ruth will come back. <laughs> we have gathered here to praise God and to witness to our faith as we celebrate the life of of Ruth Naomi Chick. We come together in grief, shock. We acknowledge that something is not right. We feel a tremendous loss. So we seek in this time, that God will grant us grace so that in our pain we will find comfort, in sorrow, hope, and in death, resurrection. Amen and amen. Will you stand as together we sing hymn number 308?
The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. O God of grace and glory, we remember before you this day our sister Ruth. We thank you for giving her to us, her family and friends, to know and to love as a companion on her earthly pilgrimage. In your boundless compassion, console us who mourn. Give us faith to see in death the gate of eternal life, so that in quiet confidence we may continue our course on earth until by your call we are reunited with those who have gone before through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. You have the appointed scripture passages listed in your bulletin. Um, if you know Ruth Check, she was a person of the Bible. I don't agree exactly with the passages she chose, so I've added a few uh, little verses because some of these passages she chose, she didn't get the full context. But I would invite you to take the Pew Bible. I have the page number, and our Old Testament lesson comes from the book of Job, chapter 19, and I'm reading verses 25 through 27. Ruth wanted emphasis on verses 26 through 27, but she should have included verse 25. <laughs> For I know that my Redeemer lives, and that at the last he will stand upon the earth, and after my skin has been thus destroyed, then in my flesh I shall see God, whom I shall see on my side, and my eyes shall behold and not another. My heart faints within me. Herein ends the reading of the Old Testament lesson. The Psalter lesson you can find in the hymnal on page number 844. It is Psalm 121. We will not use the congregational uh, music response, but we will read this responsively. I will read the uh, part that is printed in the light print, and you as a congregation will respond by reading that which is printed in the bold. Ruth had listed this as one of her favorite psalms. The other psalm that she listed as a favorite psalm was Psalm 46. So I am reading Psalm 121. I lift up my eyes to the hills. From whence does my help come? My help comes from the Lord who made heaven and earth. And the Lord will not let your foot be moved. The Lord who keeps you will not slumber. Behold, the one who keeps Israel will neither slumber nor sleep. The Lord is your keeper. The Lord is your shade on your right hand. The sun shall not smite you by day, nor the moon by night. The Lord will keep you from all evil and will keep your life. The Lord will keep your going out and your coming in from this time forth and forevermore. And the epistle lesson comes from the first book of Corinthians, chapter 15. 
And once again, Ruth left out some verses. And you know what? If she causes me to die today, I'm happy with it. <laughs> First Corinthians chapter 15, 166 in the Pew Bible in the New Testament. And if Ruth heard me say New Testament, she'd say they ought to know that's in the New Testament. What I am saying, brothers and sisters, is this. Flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God, nor does the perishable inherit the imperishable. Listen, I will tell you a mystery. We will not all die, but we will all be changed in a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, and at the last trumpet. For the trumpet will sound and the dead will be raised imperishable and we will be changed. For this perishable body will put on imperishability and this mortal body must put on immortality. And when this perishable body puts on imperishability and this mortal body puts on immortality, then the saying that is written will be fulfilled. Death has been swallowed up in victory. Herein ends the reading of the epistle lesson. Ruth chose two gospel readings. One gospel reading was not enough, but both are from the gospel of John. Will you please stand for the reading of the gospel? And our first reading is from John chapter 14, verses 1 through 6. And it's on page 102, Kim's telling me I have it wrong, surprise, surprise, page 102 in the New Testament. Do not let your hearts be troubled. Believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house there are many mansions, and if it were not so, would I have told you that I go to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and take you to where I am going, so that where I am, there you may be also. And you know the, pl you know the way to the place where I am going. Thomas said to him, Lord, we don't know where you are going. How can we know the way? And Jesus said to Thomas, I am the way and the truth and the life. And no one comes to the Father except through me. And the gospel according to John chapter 11, verses 17 through 25 and you can find it for some reason. I must have had a different uh, version of this Pew Bible. Page 98 is actually where you can find it. Page 98, John chapter 11, verses 17 through 25. This is a great story of Jesus and the resurrection of Lazarus from the grave. When Jesus arrived he found that Lazarus had already been in the tomb four days. Now Bethany was near Jerusalem, some two miles away, and many of the Jews had come to Martha and Mary to console them about their brother. When Martha heard that Jesus was coming, she went and met him while Mary stayed at home. Martha said to Jesus, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. But even now I know that God will give you whatever you ask of him. And Jesus said to her, your brother will rise again. And Martha said to him, I know that he will rise again in the resurrection on the last day. And Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. Those who believe in me 
even though they die, they will live. And everyone who lives and believes in me will never die. This is the word of God for the people of Christ gathered in the memory and celebration of the life of Ruth Jake. Thanks be to God. Amen. Please be seated. I start this afternoon with a prayer that Steve Kerhoulis wrote. Steve Kerhoulis, as some of you know, uh, was Ruth's pastor first at Cashers United Methodist Church and then in a combination here at Cashers and Lake Toxway United Methodist Church. Steve and Ruth had remained friends for many years. And I am not telling many of you a mystery that Steve Krahulis is supposed to be here today. Uh, I'm supposed to be here too, by the way. But Steve is supposed to do her sermon. But I get to do her sermon, ha ha. <laughs> so I'm first going to read Steve's comments, but I'm going to begin with a prayer that Steve wrote. Father, we miss our friend. But knowing she is with you makes her absence a lot easier to handle. We are grateful for her example of generous living, her variety of ministries, her faith that she boldly defended and proclaimed. Thanks be to God who so wonderfully displayed himself through a single gal by the name of Ruth Check, whom we all called our friend. Amen. So Steve gave me permission to edit his remarks, and I have done that, uh, but I'm going to share his remarks. In Ruth's... Um, arrangements and directions about the service, which included scripture passages, which included hymns. By the way, she had marked out some hymns and changed the hymns even recently. Um, she had my name and Steve's name. Steve was to preach and I was to officiate and to do the eulogy because and then she wrote at a later time and marked out Steve's name and said, Steve is now living and serving a church as pastor in Maine, so it's not necessary for him to come. We did extend an invitation to Steve to come um, and to cover his expenses and his wife Candy's expenses to come be with us, but Steve declined. So he wrote instead what I would consider to be um, a eulogy. So let us hear Steve. Ruth Check was a mold breaker. She was one of a kind, an original. Who do you know that is like her? I'm guessing no one. And her name is interesting because in the Hebrew language, it is ruet, which means friend. She certainly lived up to her name. Ruth was a friend to many of us. Remember, these are Steve's words. I, Steve, actually shared with her, with tears in my eyes, that I counted her among my very best of friends. And you are probably wondering why I'm not sharing these words with you in person. It's because Ruth gave me a way out. She wrote down in her funeral instructions that it is difficult for me to travel given the time away from my responsibilities in Maine, plus the cost of the flights, etc. She did not want me to come. <laughs> and considering how Ruth would feel about it in her words, why waste so much time and money? 
So I, Steve, decided I wouldn't give her a reason to complain about it in heaven. <laughs> because you and I know she would. How to put into a few words what she meant to me personally, to my family, and to those who had the distinct joy of knowing her. I, Steve, think of Ruth as a female version of the Apostle Paul. She was tough, dogmatic, and yet wept over the condition of those who she feared were without Christ in their life. If you were to ask Ruth about her greatest desire, it would be for Jesus Christ to become the Savior and Lord of every human being. She would want me, Steve, to say to you, to those of you who have not yet opened your heart to Jesus, to do so either by the end of her memorial service or in the very near future. In her words, do it and do it soon. <laughs> Thanks be to God for the love that Ruth Check shared with Steve Kerhuis and for the many years that he ministered to her as a pastor, as a confidant, and as a friend. Amen and amen. I, as pastor of the Lake Toxaway United Methodist Church, bring you greetings in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. We have gathered in the name of the God of Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, Joseph, David, Solomon, and the God of our dear friend, Ruth Chick. We have gathered to worship God and to bear witness to God's faithfulness that is new every morning. That, by the way, was also on one of uh, the sheets as Ruth's, one of her favorite passages of scripture. God's faithfulness that is new every morning, even as we grieve the physical death of Ruth Check. In the last year, I referred to Ruth as the Anna of the Lake Toxaway United Methodist Church. So to provide some context to those of you who are biblically illiterate, and Ruth would say, if they're biblically illiterate, you ought to say to them, you better start reading the scripture and know it. But to provide some context, remember that Anna was the woman a prophetess who lived in the temple in Jerusalem and who awaited the arrival of the Messiah. Luke's gospel tells us she had been a widow for 84 years and she never left the temple area. She worshipped night and day with fasting and prayers. And Luke's gospel relates the story at the very time Simeon was praying, she, Anna, showed up, broke into an anthem of praise to God and talked about the child to all who were waiting expectantly for the freeing of Jerusalem. Somehow that makes me think of Ruth, our Anna. She virtually lived in this church and she served in this community 
all the while awaiting the return of Jesus Christ, her Messiah. And she certainly led us in anthems of praise. Amen? Amen. In fact, there's a chorus that's ringing in my head, and she didn't want this, but you know what, Ruth? You are not here except in our memory. And so we're going to break out in chorus. Charlie, will you get us going for Go Tell It on the Mountain? <laughs> Go tell it on the mountain, over the hills and everywhere. Go tell it on the mountain that Jesus Christ is born. Go tell it on the mountain, over the hills and everywhere. Go tell it on And as Ruth would say, Roger, you were kind of not paying attention during that. <laughs> I want to commend you as a congregation and as friends because you have supported, cared, listened, encouraged, and well, sometimes just shook your head and said, that is Ruth. Bill, Hazel, April, and numerous others, including me, she would thank us for how we honored her fierce independence, which made her to be one of the more frustrating persons in our lives. <laughs> and she wanted me to remember and remind us that Ruth is just fine. We buried her yesterday. And she meant that. Even though she said it as a jest sometimes, she understood that to be absent from the body was to be present with the Lord. And while I keep waiting for a phone call with one of her serious rants and complaints, that's supposed to be funny. <laughs> Any of us who knew or knew what it meant to get a serious call with rants and raves, Amen. Amen. God answered Ruth's prayers and allowed her to leave this world quickly. I can see her finger pointing at me and shaking. I told you I was almost always right. I am in heaven and no one had to take care of me. <laughs> yes, Ruth, you were almost always right. And there were many of us who cared about you, loved you, even when you were curt to us, and sometimes it bordered on rude. <laughs> you would show up in a few days with one of our infamous gifts, a gift of food, or a picture, or a personal keepsake, or candies as a peace offering. I give thanks to God for Ruth Check 
and her gifts and graces poured out into our lives. I loved her. And I know she loved me. She had to work with me longer than she worked with any other pastor. And I earned the title of her favorite pastor, I hope. (laughs) Because she knew that I cherished her in all of her complex human condition as she cherished me and you in all of our complex human conditions. May God grant us grace to continue in faithfulness as his children and to hold fast to the great promise of the resurrection of all who follow Christ as Lord and Savior. And may we continue to go tell it on the mountain. She would want me to remind us that the only things that last are the things we give away and the love of Christ Jesus our Lord who willingly gave up his place in heaven and came to earth in human form and faced death on the cross to bring salvation to each and every one of us. Thanks be to God for the victory that was given by Christ Jesus. And thanks be to God for the life of our beloved Anna, Ruth Jack. Go tell it on the mountain, over the hills and everywhere. Go tell it on the mountain, Jesus Christ is born. Amen. Amen and amen. Let us stand and we will sing one of Ruth's favorite hymns, hymn number 377.
Please be seated. Well, I wrote a prayer because I was afraid I'd be too emotional, and perhaps I've not put it in here. That would be Ruth saying, I told you I didn't like written prayers. If you can't pray it from your heart, then why bother? And that may be what Ruth gets, as that may be exactly what she gets. Oh, well. (laughs) Really, Marcus? I cannot believe Ruth could pull that one off. She did. How would Ruth Check pull that off? But only Ruth Check would figure out how to pull that one off. I would say to you that this church has a tradition that we gather at the altar, and Ruth would remind us that we never gather at the altar and pray just for ourselves, that we also pray for the needs of others and the needs of the world. So if you would like to join me as I kneel at the altar, please know that you are welcome to join me as we pray. Holy God, we gather at this altar and in this sanctuary and we acknowledge that all of life is a gift from you. We acknowledge that Ruth had a unique eye that could capture the beauty of a sunset, sunrise, or the stance of a butterfly and photograph it and share it with others. And that, O oh God, her artistic eye was such a gift when most of the time Ruth spent telling everyone, rush, hurry, let's get on with it. We acknowledge that all of us have been privileged to know Ruth and that her witness and testimony were lived out daily, even in the last week of her life, as she embraced and welcomed a new physician and as she welcomed friends from CVS who had more tattoos than Ruth wore clothes. (laughs) We acknowledge that Ruth's heart was a heart of love and that Ruth's heart carried many things. We acknowledge that she was your child, redeemed by the grace of Jesus Christ. We acknowledge that she was born into an immigrant family and that life was hard and work was the way we also acknowledge That from an early time, Ruth was taught of the love and salvation of Jesus Christ, her Lord. And that she appropriated that teaching for herself and accepted Jesus as her Savior. O Lord, we gather at this altar and remember the needs of people that Ruth loved and cared about. Indeed, O God, we even want to name them because Ruth kept a running list and prayed regularly and faithfully. 
So hear us now as we bring before you names and concerns that we carry and that Ruth carried. Alan and Cece Prather. Susan Bagwell. Barbara Brockoff. John Thomas. Sharon Moon. Kirk Smith. Susan Bagwell. Dolores Walker. Jane Cato. Sarah Leiser. Kathy Johnson. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers as we continue to pray that Christ taught us when we pray to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. And will you stand, and we will take our hymnals and turn to page number 534 as we sing our closing hymn. Sure. 
shall be at last. Amen. So there is no need to rush this afternoon. I know some of us might want to watch a basketball game or two. But we should stay and celebrate Ruth Check's life. We should hug each other. We should love each other. And most of all, we should celebrate the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. Receive this benediction. And now, the God who is able to call Lazarus back from the grave invites us to leave and to live in the light of the resurrection, knowing that death has been swallowed up in victory. We go in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.